1982, I was completing the Masters in Archaeology. My mentor, Dr. Clifford Wilson, said for your thesis, uh, you're going to have to direct an original excavation. And in the work I had referred to, paleontological work having to do with the dinosaur footprints in uh, the Paluxy River outside Glen Rose, Texas, but that crossed with archaeological work because human footprints had been discovered as well, and I referred to that. So very wisely, Dr. Wilson said, uh, for your thesis, you're going to have to include some original work to combine this archaeology human uh, involvement and paleontology dinosaur involvement. So I, uh, I came to Glen Rose, Texas. At that point in time, I was president of a small college in East St. Louis, Illinois, a pastor of uh, a church in uh, St. Louis, Missouri. So I, I came to Glen Rose. I recruited an old friend, uh, Ron Jenkins, and his assistant, Charles Hiltabittle, and other volunteer labor and paid $20 to Mr. Emmett McFall for a week's privilege of excavating on their property along the banks of the Paluxy. We had to actually remove the overburden by hand, and that is stipulated in uh, credible archaeology and paleontology, had to remove the overburden by hand, and we were able to shove it over the side of the embankment. Now, due to state regulations, we're not permitted to do that anymore, and we follow the regulations to the letter. So I had observed a few dinosaur footprints leading in a direction. So I said, this is where we dig. Well, first we had to remove the overburden and began to slowly excavate through the clay marl and down to the next layer. And uh, over a period of days, we had 19 different new dinosaur footprints, tridactyl, that is three-toed dinosaur footprints, that were made by Acrocanthosaurus. And then I was ready to terminate the excavations and go back to Missouri. And uh, Charles Hiltabittle and one of the other's assistants said, uh, just let us We'll do the work, you tell us what to do. Let us remove just one more slab. We have the manpower here, you've trained them what to do, they'll do it correctly, just let us remove one more slab. Well, if you knew the terrain of the Paluxy due to the long centuries and millennia movement of the rocks, there are cracks every few feet. And we learn to pry, to elevate, and then drop slab of rock, sometimes it's six feet, sometimes it's eight feet by four, by six, depending on conditions, able to drop it back down and that breaks the surface plane. Then we're able to pry that onto rollers and that doesn't destroy the site. And he called for me and uh, he said, I think we found something, okay. And I said, oh, Charles, that's probably just another dinosaur track. He said, well, I've seen you excavate enough of them uh, it's not pointed, it's rounded. So I stepped down and said, let me take a closer look. And uh, it appeared to be the heel of something different. So I said, please step back. So I excavated actually to and under the next ledge, and it turned out to be a 16 and a half inch human footprint that was 17 inches from the dinosaur track nearby. So then we removed uh, more of the ledge, excavated. There was a left, we had a right, another left, and another right. To be able to credibly state that we have a new trail of anything, you need at least three, left, right, left, or right, left, right. And here we had four. I made one call to the press. They flew down by helicopter and the next morning I got on the plane to fly back to St. Louis. The Fort Worth Star-Telegram had front page, track step on evolution, and they had covered the story of what we had excavated 
just the days before. And I went back to Missouri intending to forget this or get back to my preoccupation. But the press called, CBS, ABC, called simultaneously. The Canadian Broadcasting Company called. Uh, they called from out of the country. And uh, I tried to forget it, but couldn't. And that changed the course of my life. So I'm preoccupied with continuing the excavation of trails of dinosaur footprints and human footprints among them.